I've been taking a daily creatine supplement for the past 30 years. And to explain why, I'm going to tell you about creatine's many anti-aging benefits. And if you're not already taking creatine, I guarantee that by the end of this presentation, you'll have already decided to try it. Creatine is a supplement that most people think of as only being of benefit to those interested in sports performance. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Creatine has so much to offer those of us with an interest in extending health span that it would be negligent of us to ignore it, especially when we consider that the very low cost of this supplement delivers a cost to benefits ratio that's near impossible to beat. I'm probably one of the few researchers that have been taking creatine for such an extended period of time so I'm probably more qualified than most to give you some worthwhile personal insights into both creatine's long-term benefits and its potential side effects. Now I have to admit that in common with most users of creatine, I first started taking this supplement purely for its effects on muscle performance. However, as the years went by and as my research and knowledge of creatine expanded, the more convinced I became that this was a supplement I never wanted to be without. Creatine has several study-backed anti-aging benefits that are not generally well known. And I'll throw in a quick teaser. It can slow brain aging, improve insulin resistance, and it can even help fade age spots. In fact, I'm going to present a very strong case for creatine to be used as an essential base supplement by every single health-conscious mature adult on the planet, both male and female. Because if you leave out creatine, you'll be missing out on one of the best value, most effective anti-aging supplements available. Creatine is one of the most studied nutritional supplements, and it was actually first discovered way back in 1832. However, it wasn't until following the 1992 Olympic Games that creatine supplementation gained mainstream popularity. Nowadays, creatine is widely used among both recreational and professional athletes, and it's risen to become one of the most popular dietary sports supplements on the market, with over $400 million in annual sales. More recently though, creatine has been receiving great interest from the anti-aging and life extension communities. We'll be looking at the reason for that shortly. But first, what exactly is creatine? Creatine is a tripeptide molecule that's naturally produced by the body from the amino acids methionine, arginine and glycine. It's synthesized mainly in the liver and kidneys, then taken up from the blood by other tissues. Typically, we produce on average around one gram of creatine per day, and most goes on to be stored as phosphocreatine, primarily in our muscles, but also in our brain. Creatine is also available from our diet by consuming meat, fish, and dairy, with meat and fish serving as the main supply. A typical carnivorous diet supplies between one to two grams of creatine per day. And yes, you'd be right in assuming that creatine deficiency is an issue for those following a vegan or vegetarian diet. Thankfully though, creatine supplementation can easily address any deficiency, both age and diet related. Taken as a dietary supplement, creatine is a tasteless white crystalline powder which readily dissolves in liquids and it's most commonly sold as creatine monohydrate. Now a couple of other versions of creatine do exist, however the monohydrate form is by far the most studied, arguably the most effective and just happens to be the cheapest. And so long as you buy from a trusted brand that sells third-party tested pure creatine, then you really can't go wrong. I currently use creatine from the aging research company Do Not Age, and they've very kindly provided viewers of this video with a 10% discount code, which I'm told will work with any of their products. Next up, let's take a look at what creatine does and how it works in our bodies. So why do we need creatine and what does it do? In a nutshell, creatine helps the body generate energy. Now I'm sure most of you are already familiar with ATP, short for adenosine triphosphate, often referred to as the body's universal energy transport molecule. Well, creatine is essential to the production and recycling of our ATP, and here's why. To create energy, we must break down the three phosphate compound ATP into a two phosphate compound called ADP. Then to restart the energy cycle, we need to find an extra phosphate to recycle ADP back into ATP. And this is where creatine steps in. The creatine stored in our body as phosphocreatine can donate a phosphate to ADP, and then the whole process starts over again. So by promoting faster and more efficient recycling of ATP, creatine helps provide the fuel our bodies need to accomplish physical and metabolic tasks. The majority of our creatine, around 95% in fact, is stored in skeletal muscle. 
Specifically, fast twitch type 2 muscle fibers, where creatine plays a key role in buffering the concentration of ATP in skeletal muscle cells. The remaining creatine can be found in the brain and other high demand organs. Now, two thirds of our creatine is stored in the phosphorylated form known as phosphocreatine, and the remaining third is what's called free creatine. Creatine is also what's known as an osmolite, which simply means that it pulls water into cells, thereby keeping them hydrated. This causes a cell volumization effect within our muscle cells, and this is thought to play a role in muscle growth and strength. After only a few weeks of supplementing with creatine, many users report improved muscle strength and postponed fatigue in both everyday activities and sport-specific environments. Next, we're going to take a look at creatine's anti-aging benefits and also discuss how it exerts those effects. Creatine is used as a basic energy source in our muscles, particularly by fast twitch fibers. And here's how that works. Our muscles use ATP during exercise, the byproduct of which is ADP. Creatine in its phosphorylated form, phosphocreatine, helps to replenish ATP by providing an immediate source of high energy phosphate groups. These get picked up by ADP to reform ATP, thereby serving as a buffer that maintains ATP production. Since phosphocreatine is made through the conversion of creatine by ATP in the first place, any shortage of ATP will slow the synthesis of phosphocreatine. Now, during high intensity exercise, the ATP to ADP ratio dramatically decreases as the high energy phosphate groups from ATP get used up. This can result in muscle failure during short bursts of intense anaerobic exercise, such as in weightlifting. However, creatine phosphorylates ADP and converts it back into ATP, so having sufficient creatine available is therefore crucial for sustaining an ATP to ADP ratio that will delay muscle fatigue and extend the length of time that a high intensity exercise can be carried out. All of which potentially results in greater adaptive response by the muscle fibres than would otherwise have been possible. The best way we can guarantee to meet exercise demands for reaping maximum benefits is to supplement with creatine. Now, we'll be discussing dosages a little later in the presentation, but basically, the bigger you are, the more creatine you'll likely need. And we'll also be discussing the loading phase, which is something you can do to achieve even faster results. Pretty much everyone who starts taking creatine experiences a fairly rapid increase in lean mass during the first month. This has in part been attributed to water retention in the muscle tissue. Greater osmotic pressure following the increase in phosphocreatine content results in muscle cell swelling, which interestingly is considered a key stimulus for cell growth. This also just happens to benefit the aesthetic look of the muscles, with a fuller, more hydrated, youthful appearance often reported. When I first started taking creatine back in 1993, I weighed a very lean 80 kilograms and I had done for the full year previous. So I was quite shocked to record a body weight increase of almost three kilograms within the first three weeks of use, with no change in diet. I experienced no increase in body fat, so the majority of this weight gain was almost certainly due to the increased muscle cell hydration. Conversely, on the few occasions when I've taken a break from creatine, I found that it takes around four weeks for me to experience the opposite, a two to three kilo loss of body weight undoubtedly due to the decreased cell volume. So that's essentially the pathway by which creatine supplements improve muscle performance. Now, although creatine can rapidly add a little fat-free size and strength through cell volumization during those initial weeks of use, it's creatine's ability to promote greater long-term gains following regular resistance exercise that really stands out. Next, we're going to take a look at how creatine can help delay and even reverse sarcopenia. Inevitably, with aging and reduced physical activity, there follows significant decreases in muscle mass, bone density and strength. This usually begins in our 40s and appears to progress in a linear fashion. If left unaddressed, we can potentially lose as much as 50% of our muscle mass by the time we reach our 80s. And let's be honest, that's not usually a good look, male or female. This natural age-related decline is known as sarcopenia. It's been medically defined as an age-related involuntary loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength, and it's also strongly associated with reduced bone mass and bone strength. Unfortunately, the consequences of sarcopenia in older adults can be severe. The strength and functional decline associated with the condition can in turn contribute to a number of adverse health outcomes. These include frailty, falls, loss of mobility, increased insulin resistance, and even rheumatoid arthritis. 
Thankfully, however, there's strong evidence to support that taking a daily creatine supplement can help reverse these changes and consequently improve the general activities of daily living. Studies have found that even in the absence of regular resistance exercise, creatine supplementation can still provide measurable improvements not only in muscle mass but also in bone density and short burst energy levels. I will stress, however, that any benefits experienced will only be a fraction of what can be achieved when creatine is combined with regular healthy resistance exercise, and that would always be my recommendation. Research indicates that creatine is an important nutrient for maintaining brain function in both healthy people and those suffering from brain-related diseases such as dementia. To see why that might be, it's important to understand that a cell's ability to function is directly related to its mitochondrial health and ATP status. Even small deficiencies in our ATP supply can have profound effects on our tissue's ability to function properly. For example, brain neurons are extremely sensitive to diminished ATP levels. So with creatine recognized as one of the most effective nutritional supplements for maintaining or raising ATP, supplementing in later life in order to help maintain healthy brain function may well prove to be a smart strategy. And just before moving on, I should also mention that several studies have reported improvements in short-term memory recall following creatine supplementation, both in healthy adults and those suffering from dementia. The majority of brain disorders involve a disruption of the brain's energy supply systems. This applies not only to chronic age-related diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, but also to acute conditions such as strokes and traumatic brain and spinal cord injuries. This disruptive energy loss leads to the overaccumulation of damaging lipofusion pigments. Lipofusion is a recognized marker of aging. And not only is it negatively associated with longevity, it's also implicated in a variety of diseases. Evidence suggests that lipofusion can impair the functioning of seemingly unrelated cellular systems. And unfortunately, lipofusion naturally accumulates as we age. You may have heard lipofusion referred to as the age pigment or even the wear and tear pigment. In fact, those overly pigmented patches that can appear on our skin in later life, the ones that we refer to as age or liver spots, they're actually a visible buildup of lipofusion. And this is the very same unwanted pigment that's building up in our brain and other organs with every passing decade. So I'm sure you'll be very glad to hear that daily creatine supplementation has been shown to lower the accumulation of damaging lipofusion. This is a very desirable property, and in my opinion, makes creatine worth the price of entry for this one benefit alone. Many studies indicate that creatine supplementation shows great promise with regard to controlling and potentially helping prevent type 2 diabetes. In a 12-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial, those taking 5 grams of creatine daily showed a significant reduction in hemoglobin A1c compared to the placebo group. Hemoglobin A1c is a simple blood test that measures your average blood sugar levels over the past 12 weeks. So this significant reduction recorded by the study does make a pretty compelling case for those at risk of type 2 diabetes to consider supplementing with creatine. There's growing evidence emerging from human neuroimaging, genetics and epidemiology that disruptions in brain energy production, storage and utilization are implicated in the development and maintenance of depression. Creatine has shown the potential to improve these disruptions in many patients, and early clinical trials indicate that it may have efficacy as an antidepressant, which although very encouraging, will require further studies before we can reach any firm conclusions. There are basically two ways we can take creatine. We can opt to start with what's called a loading phase, which is where we consume 20 grams or more of creatine daily for five days in order to saturate the muscles as quickly as possible. Following that, we simply switch to the long-term maintenance phase, which is where we use a much lower daily dosage. This method has the advantage of faster initial results. However, it does require the ingestion of creatine four to six times per day for those first five days, which many of us will find inconvenient. The alternative is to simply start from day one with your long-term maintenance dosage, which is actually my personal preference. It will take a little longer for the muscles to become saturated, around three weeks compared to five days if using a loading phase. However, it will make absolutely no difference to your long-term results. You can mix creatine powder with water, juice, or even a smoothie, and it's practically tasteless. 
Creatine can also be found in capsule form, however the number of capsules required to meet your daily requirements renders this format somewhat impractical. My advice is stick with powder, it's cheaper and it won't contain any fillers. So how much creatine should someone take each day? Well that will depend on three factors. Your age, your body weight and your reasons for taking creatine. For the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to assume that anti-aging is your main reason and that you're at least 40 years of age or older. Study data indicates that we require more creatine the older we get. Since not only are we naturally producing less, we're also not processing it as efficiently as we once did. A sensible starting dose for anyone over 40 would be around 5 grams daily, which can of course be increased as and when necessary. Creatine should preferably be taken with some carbs, and if it's an exercise day, then best take it with the first meal that follows your workout. On non-exercise days, try to take your creatine at a similar time, again with food. Studies indicate that lean body weight does have a bearing on the optimal dosage, with bigger, heavier individuals generally requiring a little more creatine to achieve the same effects. There's also evidence to support that higher dosages are required to effectively increase brain creatine levels compared to what's required to increase phosphocreatine in muscles. Taking all this into account and correlating it with available study data, it would appear that the optimal daily dosage may vary from 5 to 12 grams per day, depending on age, body weight and purpose of supplementation. And for your information, I'm 63 and I take 10 grams daily, split 5 grams AM, 5 grams PM. And my reason for supplementing is to optimally, optimally maintain both my muscle and brain creatine stores, all part of my ongoing efforts to increase both my lifespan and my health span. Regarding how long creatine can be taken without a break, we currently have no data indicating that it's either necessary or beneficial to take regular breaks from creatine use. Having said that though, it would appear that the majority of long-term users do still tend to take occasional short breaks. However, as I said, there's currently no data indicating that this is actually necessary. So what happens when you stop taking creatine? Well, your muscle creatine levels will start to significantly deplete around two weeks after you stop taking it. And after one month, your creatine levels will have pretty much returned to their pre-supplementation levels. And by the way, your body's natural creatine output will not be suppressed following long-term supplementation. Lastly, I always recommend that you take your creatine with food in particular some carbs. This has been shown to increase muscle glycogen storage over and above what would be attained without the additional creatine. Creatine is one of the safest, most studied supplements available. And if there was any cause for concern, then we'd have known about it by now. Side effects resulting from its use are practically non-existent, especially at the dosages discussed in this presentation. The only minor issue worth mentioning is a small risk of stomach upset in susceptible individuals. This is most definitely dosage related and it's generally only ever an issue during the high dose loading phase. To avoid this minor risk completely, I would recommend always taking your creatine with food and fluids and avoiding the loading phase. It should also be noted that creatine supplementation can require that you consume a little extra water. So always be sure to stay well hydrated, especially when using high creatine dosages and be aware that if insufficient water is consumed, then stomach cramping can result. And finally, if I were to attribute just one standout property of creatine after almost 30 years of daily use, then it would have to be its ability to keep muscles looking way younger than their years by helping maintain size, shape and firmness, which of course all helps keep aging skin from sagging. And who wouldn't want that? Many thanks for watching and lastly, as always, take care, be healthy and see you all again soon.